Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. And speaking of the New Orleans Saints, Luke Johnson covers them for The Advocate, and he joins us now as he does every single Thursday. Luke, how are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. 53 came out this week. Uh, what was the biggest surprise to you when that uh, that, that 53 came out? Uh, I think the b- biggest surprise had to be Bradley Roby. I think all of us thought that there was a, a chance the Saints might roll with, with Blake Groupie. Um, you know, whether you agree with it or not, I mean, they, they kept them in the entire training camp, and it was clear they were letting them have a, an even competition with Will Lutz. So, you know, there's a chance there, but I, I think a lot of us were – kind of uh, shocked by the Roby move just because he had been, you know, kind of playing a pretty big role for this defense the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, they, they don't really have a whole lot of depth uh, at the slot corner position um, or at least tested experience depth. Um, and while he was making a pretty good salary, it wasn't, you know, it's not like something that was breaking the bank. Um, so it, it was it was a surprising move, and I, th- I think I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, I think um, – talking to some people within the, the organization, the, the sense that I got was that um, they just didn't view uh, his, you know, his, his talent level as, as kind of commensurate with his salary. Um, you know, I, I think he was maybe closer uh, in, in ability to some of the, the guys on the roster that, than what we thought in their view. So a little surprised though. And, and I mean, yeah, they're, they're putting a lot on, Alante Taylor's shoulders now uh, because he's never played you know, the spot before in an NFL game. And, uh, and you know, he's going to probably have some growing pains there. I'm, I'm no salary cap guru, but I, they move on from Lutz groupies um, is, is, inex- is more inexpensive. Then you've got Roby that you move on from as well. And the saints are like 12, 13 millions under the cap. What, what's the plan for that? If there is one. Well, it, you can roll some of the, the cap money over into future years so I I mean this is probably part of the consideration here I I don't think they're loading up uh, money this year to go after somebody who's still out there I I think anybody who's still out there at this point hoping to get uh, 10 million dollars a year is is, uh, you know uh, finding some some good stuff out there somewhere (laughs) you know Um, so look I I just uh, I, I think I think that's that's part of the equation and and you know with Lutz Specifically, I was told it was not related to money. They, they felt like uh, they felt like Groupie won that competition, and, and they could you know, use Lutz as a as a trade chip and get back an asset for him. What do you make of the Jalen Smith situation, where he was released and then brought back? I mean, I was surprised to see him released, um, but you know, at the end of the day, it makes sense. I, look, these these fifty three these initial fifty three decisions are based on a lot more than just like who's the best player. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, Jalen Smith is a guy who they could they could literally go to him and be like, "Hey, man, we're going to cut you, uh, but you're going to be a part of this team. Like, don't sign with anybody else, and you know, we'll, we'll bring you back. Um, and as long as there's that trust between the player and the organization, then it's fine. You know, they can cut him, and and you, you see him, you know, bring him back in the practice squad yesterday, and it would not be a surprise to me to see him on the active roster sometime soon, whether that's you know, before week one or you know b- before he runs out of practice squad eligibility. Um, it's just, you know, it's, you're, you're kind of playing this game where you're now, now you can keep veterans on the practice squad and keep experience in place. Um, or you can't have that with a young player. Um, you know, a guy who's on what is essentially a rookie contract, if you release him for you know, on cut down day, you get, he has to go through the waivers process. And he can be claimed by any of the other 31 teams without you having anything, any, any say in it. So uh, the Jalen Smith thing, I, I mean, I thought he was going to make the 53. And I still think he's he's a part of their 53-man plan here. Um, but they, they could just kind of get away with some gamesmanship there. So is my assertion that he was the third linebacker maybe not necessarily true? I mean, I know you're saying that he very well could be on the 53, but I had him like right there behind your two starters in Warner and Davis. Yeah, well, it, it's it just depends on how you look at it. Um, I, technically, right now their third linebacker is Zach Bond, right? Because um, he's their their starter at the, the strong side position that they almost never use, right? <laughs> so he's technically a starter, but he's he's maybe going to play like ten snaps a game this year as the starting Sam. So I, I do think though that if they're 
if they're in a position where they want to or need to sub out uh, either Pete Werner or Demario Davis, Jalen Smith would be that guy. So that means if they don't sign him to the 53, he's almost definitely going to be one of their practice squad elevations, um, which is something they can do now. They can they can literally just say this guy is activated off the practice squad for this game. They could they can do that up to three times in a given season with a given player. Um, so I mean they they can keep him on the practice squad for the first three weeks if they want to before they uh, before they sign him to the 53, uh, assuming he's still part of their plan. Maybe the position group that the Saints had the most depth of talent could you could argue was wide receiver, and then you had Traquan Smith who missed so much time, and then all of a sudden showed up and he's. He's still around. Uh, what do you make of that situation? I just think Traquan plays a valuable role here that people just never see. Um, I, I get the frustration with him as a player because he's he's frequently hurt. He's hurt again. I mean, he's hurt right now. He hasn't been practicing since August fifth, and this is just something that's a year in year out deal with him. <clears throat> but when he's on the field, like I, I just feel it's it's really hard to find a an NFL wide receiver who has like zero ego. Um, and that is exactly what Traquan is. They tell him to do a job and he does it. And his job is not catching passes is to be a very good blocking wide receiver. And they find that to be a very valuable role within that offense. Uh, so, you know, I think as long as, as long as he is, able to do that he's going to have a spot on his team because he brings more than just the, the obvious stuff that we see as you know a pass catcher or somebody who can who can get open and run routes um so I, he, he has the value it's just it's harder to it's harder to see that against you know somebody like Shaq Davis who's uh you know, making a highlight real play in the preseason you mentioned Shaq Davis and if we take Jalen Smith out of the equation here briefly of the guys that they kept on the practice squad um, that you watched in, in training camp and in the preseason, who is somebody you could see making an impact, maybe a significant more for the Saints this year or, or down the road? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to consider Shaq Davis. Yeah, um, yeah I think everybody else that they kept is, is like, a, like a depth kind of guy, right? As somebody who's, who's, who is going to be able to fill in. You, you think of guys like Storm Norton. Um, you know, he might be another guy who's active on game day because he's like their swing tackle. Um, but out of that whole group, I, I think Shaq Davis is the only one who you like, like they might have something there. And you know, I think people ask, well, why, why do you put them on the practice squad? It's, I think there's just, there's a lot of receivers in the NFL who, who flash. Right? Um, like the, the, the waiver wire is just loaded with those guys, um, which is why I think Shaq made it through waivers. But um, you look at then some of the guys who the Saints have cut on cut down day and stash in the practice squad, and uh, some of these guys end up coming out and playing big roles for them. Uh, just in the last couple of years, Rashid Shaheed and Jawan Johnson and you know, Marquez Callaway had a couple of good years here. Um, Lil Jordan Humphrey turned that into that, you know, like a four or five year NFL career. Um, so, I, I mean, they've, they've found these guys and these guys have taken this path before. I think Shaq can be the next one. I think maybe yeah, outside of Shahid might be potentially the best one out of them as a, as a pure pass catcher. He's just, I mean, he's big, he's rangy, he's athletic. Uh, he showed he can make some contested catches. Um, I think he's, he's just got to get a little bit more seasoning. They got to see a little bit more out of him before they can trust him on the, on the 53. And they, and honestly, they probably thought he had a better chance of clearing waivers than somebody like A.T. Perry, who they drafted in the sixth round. Sure. Last one. Uh, how big is the risk they're taking swapping out both specialists? I, I mean, I, I just think I think it's a huge risk, and I think you're foolish if you don't think it is uh, before you see these guys play when the lights are on. Um, you know, I, it's it's uh, that's I think the biggest surprise to me is because Dennis Allen has always been such a conservative-minded coach. Um, to see him really go out on a limb here with. Uh, with his, his two rookie specialists, I mean, it shows he, he trusts his, his coaches and front office talent evaluators because, I, I mean, these guys obviously were in his ear telling them this is the move. Um, but, you know, I, there's there's definitely a chance that this just goes badly, right? I, I, you, you just haven't seen it. And, and you know, it, it, 
there's always you know the kickers and punters on the on the open market, but I, you know we saw this a couple of years ago when the Saints were trying to get through the Will Watts injury year, where they were just like you know, there were four guys in here before they found somebody they could they could rely on. So um, it's a risk for sure. Maybe it'll work out, but you know if it doesn't, they got to have a plan B ready. Hey, it's on. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. Leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button. So you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.